Hi everyone, welcome back to the homestead. I want to talk to you guys about a couple of problems that we're facing here in our garden. One is obviously pests. Uh, we have aphids, cutworms, and hornworms, and also just fungus. So let's talk first about fungus. That can look like uh, different things on different plants. On our strawberry plants, it looks like rust spots. And um, we haven't had a lot of rain recently, so it's a little surprising that these are showing up already, but it is very hot. So the way that we're gonna treat that is, first of all, removing any of the leaves that have spots on them. When you remove these, be careful if you're using any type of scissors, make sure that you sterilize those or rub them down with alcohol afterwards because you don't want to spread those diseases. Also, any leaves that have fungus on them, you want to be sure not to use those in your compost because again, you don't want that to spread around. So once we've removed all of those damaged leaves, we're going to spray these leaves on both sides, the healthy ones, we're going to spray them on both sides of the leaves with some copper spray. Copper spray is organic, so it's not going to damage our plants, it's not going to be harmful to us, and this is something that you can use right up until the day of harvest. So even if you have fruit on your fruits or vegetables and you're having a problem with fungus and you need to treat it, you can safely do that right up until the day of harvest. Because fungus is something that I have had a problem with in the past, even on our fruit trees and on our tomato plants, I'm gonna go ahead and spray those as well. We are not seeing any signs of um, problems right now, but I kind of want to get a jump start on that. I don't want to wait until it's too late and all of our trees lose their leaves. So we're going to go ahead and treat those as well. To discourage the growth of fungus in your garden, especially in the cases of tomato plants and zucchini and squash, you want to make sure that you're keeping them pruned, that they're not overly grown with foliage. Um, any of the leaves that are touching the ground, you want to make sure that you're removing those. You want to encourage a lot of good airflow. That'll keep the fungus down. Another problem that we've had here on the homestead is with garden pests. So let's address, first of all, aphids. Aphids are tiny little bugs that will form usually on the top of a plant, and in our case, our lettuce plant. And fortunately, it was minimized to just one plant. So we were able to catch that pretty early on. You can spray these and uh, kill them with various different chemical sprays or even with organic sprays. We're trying to get away as much as possible from using any kind of sprays in our garden, even organic ones. I'm not saying that I won't use them in the future. I have used them in the past, but we're trying to get away from that as much as possible because when you're growing a self-sustainable garden, uh, homestead, you want to try to stay away from things that cost a lot of money and you're going to have to keep reusing them. So instead, what we're trying to do is encourage a healthy environment for our garden. Now, the enemy of aphids is ladybugs. Besides being really, really terribly cute, they love to eat those um, nasty little critters and they do a really good job really fast. So we actually purchased ladybugs. Uh, we ordered them online from Amazon and they came in the mail and we released them into our garden. If you're going to do this, it's important to know that when you release your ladybugs, it has to be late in the evening, um, after the sun goes down, before it gets dark. So the first thing you want to do is spray the leaves of your plants with water because these little ones will need a good drink. Uh, they've been in the mail for a few days, so you want to make sure that they get a good start and then just shake them out of the bag and onto your plants. What they will do is they will munch on those aphids and within a couple of days, all of the aphids were gone um, from our garden. We know that those ladybugs are still around because I can see one or two of them in the morning in the garden, but most of the time, they will just make their homes in the trees around your garden. So even though you might not see those ladybugs in your garden, they're still close enough so that if you have a problem in the future with aphids, they'll just come right back. It is important to know the difference between ladybugs and Japanese beetles. Japanese beetles will actually feed on your plants. Ladybugs will not. They will only feed on those little um, insects. So you want to know the difference between the two. The other two big garden pests that we've had a problem with are cutworms and hornworms. The hornworms this year on my tomatoes and bell peppers have just been awful. I go to bed 
one night with uh, my plants just looking great and the next morning I'll come out and I'll have an entire bell pepper plant that's just been eaten down to uh, nothing but stems, like the, all the leaves are gone. So uh, hornworms can do a lot of damage very quickly. You can spray your plants with BT. Um, I'll put a link to that down in the uh, description of this video. But again, we're trying to get away from using any types of sprays. So if that's something that you're interested in, um, there's really no replacement for just your presence in the garden. You'll just need to pick those by hand, squish them, get rid of them. That's the best way to do it. Um, same thing with cutworms. Another big problem if you have squash or zucchini in your garden is probably going to be those squash bugs. I've already seen a few moths on our plants, so I know that this is not far behind. These moths will lay their eggs down at the base of your plant. That larva will hatch, dig itself into the stem of your uh, plant, into the trunk, and they will eat the inside of your plant. So by the time that you notice that you have any damage, unfortunately, it's usually too late. You can try to dig out the, um, the larva, but again, it's already done a lot of damage. To my knowledge, there's really nothing to do to eliminate this problem altogether. The best course of action is to uh, plant a lot of squash and zucchini, like more than you would think that you would need, and harvest as much as you can. And when you see that you're getting uh, those squash bugs damage already, just go ahead and remove the plants. Discard them, make sure that you're not throwing that into your compost also because you don't want to encourage the development and the reproduction of those. And they'll, if they do, they'll be more likely to come back next year. Also, if you plant them in a different area of your garden, that'll minimize the damage for the following year too. So really, that's probably the best way to manage those. So aside from just manually removing these damaging bugs, what we've done this year is we have purchased some praying mantis eggs. We are actually housing these right now in our elderberry trees, which are located in our garden. These will hatch, those praying mantis will spread all over the garden and in the trees. They will make that area their home. Praying mantis are fantastic because they will eat all kinds of damaging bugs. They will not eat your plants, so no damage to your garden. The only bugs that they do not eat are ladybugs. How fantastic is that? So we're trying to go a little more natural. Um, it's unfortunately costing us a little bit in our garden right now because we haven't quite established this healthy ecosystem. But our hope is as the year progresses and in future years that we will see more and more balance. So should you spray your garden or not? Should you spray it with organic things? All of that depends on your long-term goals. If your long-term goal is to have a garden and it's an ecosystem that is self-sustainable, that can keep itself balanced, then you may consider buying some of these good bugs and populating your garden with some of these instead of even the organic sprays. If you've not had success as a gardener in the past and you really just want to have a successful garden, you, you need that motivation, you need a little bit of encouragement, you just need to know that you do not have a brown thumb, then you know what, like I said, no judgment. I have used the sprays before, I've used organic sprays, but they are effective. The downside to using any kind of spray is you're really not encouraging that healthy ecosystem, you're not encouraging that balance, and you're probably going to find yourself having to spray over and over again. The other downside to it is depending on what you're using to spray, even though it may be organic, you could actually be killing a lot of those beneficial bugs. You could be killing some of the pollinators like bees, so you really want to be careful what you're using on your plants. In killing those things, even if you may not be directly killing them, if say for example you just want to spray to get rid of the aphids, well it will get rid of the aphids, but ladybugs eat aphids. So by eliminating the aphids, you've just eliminated the need for ladybugs to stay around too. Which means next year the aphids will be back and no ladybugs. So again, just think of what your long-term goals are. If you're in a place where you want this to be your homestead, you want this to be your garden, you want to have big beautiful things growing and you know that you're gonna have to share some with uh, with the bugs but you're prepared to plant a little bit more knowing that you're gonna use you're gonna lose a little bit of your crop but you're okay with that because you really don't want to spend the money 
and the time on spraying your garden, then maybe this is something that you might look into also. Um, Nature's Good Guides is the company that we purchased these from. Uh, it came through Amazon, but it's from Nature's Good Guys. I will put their information down in the link um, down in the description of this video. And hopefully that's something that's going to help you guys out too. I'm hoping that it works for us. You guys will just have to tag along and see our progress. It worked great with the aphids um, and the ladybugs. That was just, it was a blast. It was terrific. I loved it. I'm hoping that we're going to have just as much success with the praying mantis. And in the future, I actually want to purchase some more of those healthy beneficial bugs to um, also add to the soil, which will reduce a lot of the, uh, those bad soil pests. It, it just seems like a healthier way to go. So hopefully that's something that you guys can benefit from. I hope you enjoyed this video. Hope to see you guys in a future video soon. Until then, y'all have a blessed day. Bye-bye.